If the COVID vaccines were video game characters, what would their stats be? Let's take a look. Effectiveness. A lot of figures have been banded about, but all of them have been based on trial data and it's really hard to compare like for like. Pfizer-BioNTech says its vaccine is up to 95% effective after two doses. The Moderna vaccine is said to be nearly 95% effective, while the Oxford-AstraZeneca one is between 62 and 90% effective. This 62% figure may sound lower, but no one who received the Oxford vaccine during trials was hospitalised or became seriously ill with Covid. Basically, they all work, otherwise they wouldn't have been approved. Price. Countries don't like to say how much they're paying for each vaccine because the information is commercially sensitive. But it's thought the UK paid £15 for each dose of the Pfizer vaccine, £25 for each dose of the Moderna vaccine, but only £3 for each dose of the Oxford one. In places like the UK, the vaccine is free to anyone who wants it. But these governments still have to pay a lot of money to these companies, so they'd rather it was cheaper. How they're made. The Pfizer and Moderna ones are RNA vaccines made up of tiny fragments of the virus's genetic code surrounded by a bubble of fat. When it's in the body, it starts to create the spike protein of the coronavirus. The body recognises this is happening and makes antibodies and T-cells to fight the virus off. Next time the person encounters the virus for real, they've already got everything they need. But the Oxford vaccine uses a different approach. They've taken a version of the common cold virus that used to infect chimpanzees, altered it so it doesn't infect people, and then added a bit of the genetic code of COVID-19. Now, once these blueprints are inside the body, they start producing the coronavirus's spike protein. The immune system recognises this and acts. Storage and transport. The Pfizer vaccine needs to be stored at minus 70 degrees Celsius, sent out in special boxes surrounded by dry ice to freezer farms, where it can be kept for up to six months. It can then be stored in a normal fridge for up to five days before being given to people. It's a similar process with Moderna, but that vaccine only needs to be kept in a regular freezer, so at around minus 20 degrees Celsius. The Oxford vaccine, though, only needs to be kept in a normal fridge, which means it's easier and cheaper to move around than the other two. But the truth is, when it comes to vaccines, they're not up against each other. They're all going to play key roles when it comes to ending this pandemic. <laughs>